Welcome to Mormon Book Reviews, where an evangelical encounters the restoration. I'm your host, Stephen Pinecker. And as you can see, I have a guest here that's very popular with my audience. And before I get to that, I just want to address a few things. This is going to be the first episode that I'm releasing since I did my appearance at Mormon Stories. I want to say my inbox, inbox is inundated. My Facebook Messenger is getting messages all the time. I was just reading a message I got from Serbia just a few minutes ago somebody from Serbia who's a big fan of what I'm doing and found me because of Mormon stories. For all of those who are new viewers or those of you who have reached out to me, I've, I've, ha I've had the opportunity to respond to some. I will be emailing everybody who's messaged me. You will be getting a response from me. I just want to say thank you. Apparently, I touched a lot of lives and I was just going to do a little book review channel. And I got people telling me how much my story helped them. I had lunch with somebody Saturday morning who insisted I got to meet you now, father of six. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm honored and privileged. And I just want to thank everybody out there who've, who've, who've just found me out. Uh, welcome to the channel and welcome to the community. And uh, thanks again for all the positive feedback. Sorry, get off my soapbox now. Jonathan, welcome back <laughs> to the program. Well, I'm happy to be here with you, especially on this first one and your post uh, Mormon stories. Yeah, it's kind of wild, dude. Let's just say it's kind of yeah, wild. Yeah, uh, that's the reason, awesome. Uh, the reason I had you on, you know, of course, those of you who are regular viewers on my channel, I usually kind of have a, a mix on Tuesday where I do like these shorter segments. And uh, what, just this past weekend, uh, they just had their uh, semi-annual uh, Book of Mormon Evidences Conference uh, put on by Rod Meldrum, my good bud, Rod, who I had lunch, dinner with the night before I typed my uh, Mormon stories interview. And he put on this big conference. Um, Jonathan, I just wanted, I had you come on because I want you to give us an overview of how the event went. And maybe you can even touch about uh, on some of the presentations that you gave as well. Okay, sure. Happy to. Yeah, it took place um, on Friday or Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So three days. They have a, a main hall with several hundred people in it. And then they have four or five uh, additional concurrent sessions. So it's uh, an enormous conference. It is, you know, there's, uh, I don't remember how many speakers, but there's somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 or 60 speakers on a wide variety of topics. They have, they cover, of course, Book of Mormon evidence issues, but also they talk about um, health and nutrition and science and, you know, some politics and just a variety of topics. It's really a fascinating thing. You can't attend all of them because they're concurrent. And over three days, you can imagine it's, it's quite an undertaking. Uh, on this particular conference, probably the, the most, um, the, the biggest audience was for Tim Ballard, who is pretty well known in the LDS community. I don't know how far outside the LDS community, but he gave a, a really stirring talk about um, a presentation about American history. And also he discussed his efforts to um, rescue orphans in Ukraine. He said there's somewhere around 30,000 orphans in Ukraine because the orphanage who have been abandoned because the people running the orphanage just, just fled and left all these kids behind. And he was heading over there shortly after the conference to work with the team that's uh, getting all the orphans and taking them to uh, the rest of Europe out of the war zone. So that's the kind of thing he does. And, you know, it was an awesome presentation, newsworthy and so forth. And then there were uh, most of the regular Heartlanders you know, who, who show up. Um, and people have a lot of diversity. It's an amazing group that really the only thing we have in common is we all think the Okamora is in New York. Other than that, it's wide open. <laughs> <laughs> well, Go I ahead. love it. And I was able to attend my very first one last fall. That's right. And, yeah. uh, you know, folks, I didn't realize this until after Mormon stories. Now, a little got a little inkling of this before I went on Mormon stories, but apparently there's a lot of people who are never more, never mo mo's who are fans of Mormonism, who right. just love it, are entranced by it, find it so fascinating. And I just want to tell all of you, if you are a fan of Mormonism and you're not a Mormon, but you're just interested in the people and the topics and the history look at, uh, consider attending one of these conferences. It's, it will almost be for you like a fan convention. And yeah. 
you just go and you're going to be fascinated by it. It's you're going to meet very interesting people and mm -hmm. it's you're going to have a blast. And I think it was it's like 40 bucks to attend these things. I, so, I don't remember the cost, something and, like that. It's not very it's, expensive. Yeah, it's not very expensive. And I always tell people, but, it's like people don't realize Rob Meldrum could be making a heck of a lot more money than he is. This book yeah. here retails for eighty dollars, and if Jimmy Jimmy Swaggart has his own printing press, he publishes his own Bibles. If Jimmy Swaggart would be charging you two hundred dollars for something like this, that's so right. I just want to tell people, for those of you who think Rob Meldrum's in this for the money, that's not true. Either way, I yeah. digress. Well, and you bring up a good point because the other thing of this conference is there's lots of vendors, and there's there's vendors selling. Um, you know, like home security things, preparedness stuff, artwork, um, books of all kinds. And there's there's uh, usually at his conferences, there's some original artwork, usually pertaining to the Book of Mormon or church history. Uh, at this conference, there were several pieces that were brand new that were really spectacular by well-known artists who have painted paintings that have appeared in the church magazines and curriculum. So it's a very mainstream group. Uh, although they, we've been portrayed as out of the mainstream, right? In fact, that's one of the things that led up to the conference. About uh, around a week and a half to two weeks before the conference, the Salt Lake Tribune here in Utah, by the way, I'm in Utah right now at my house in Utah, for those who know that I'm usually in Oregon. But they, the Salt Lake Tribune here published an article about the Heartlanders. And it caused some of, somewhat of a... The, uh, stir, I should say. And so that's one of the things that I addressed in my talk that we can get to in a minute. But it was very, um, actually, I spoke twice on two different topics, but um, it, it kind of uh, is, a, is an exciting fan convention, I guess, is a good way to, to, to put it, because just having vendors and everybody's friends and everybody's enthusiastic and eager to learn new things. And Wayne May was there. He did several presentations, had some new material that no one had seen before, you know, and um, just, I don't know. It, it's, it's a fun group. That's all I can say. Yep. And, and you're right. People should come, even if, even if they just want, they, they may not agree with some of the religious ideas, but it's a fun group of people who have common interests and we're enthusiastic and we love everyone. And it's, it's really a fun, fun event. Yep. So, Next fall, folks, take a look. Maybe consider coming out, and maybe you'll see me there as well. Um, yeah. I actually talked to Ron okay. about maybe giving a presentation uh, at one of these conferences. So stay tuned. That um, would be. He, I'm sure he'd love to have that. Happen. Yeah, I think I got an idea that I want to do. So uh, maybe touch a little bit on what you talked about this weekend. Okay, let me. Should I do a screen share real sure. quick? I'll just show you what I what I put up. Yep. Okay because I think it would be helpful for people to kind of see my outline. Okay. All right. Can you see that all right? Yep. I'm not, I'm not, I won't put it on as a PowerPoint. I'll just kind of go through the slides a little bit. So I talked a little bit about MOBOM. MOBOM is the Museum of the Book of Mormon webpage and some other web pages. I demonstrated those. And then I talked about who are the Heartlanders. And I thought it was important to address because of this, um, issue with the Salt Lake Tribune article. And I, I use this kind of provocative title, the omnipresent and omniscient heartlanders, <laughs> which is a little tongue in cheek, but it was fun. So I, I pointed out that um, heartlanders are church members everywhere around the world. Here's some examples. And then I, I pointed out that in BYU studies recently, there was an article that uh, compared the limited Mesoamerican model with the heartland model. So again, it's, it's a mainstream idea. It's not some fringe thing. And then I pointed out here on this one that who are the Heartlanders? We study church history, teachings of the prophets, the scriptures, and the extrinsic evidence, archaeology, anthropology, geography, and so on. And we make informed decisions because we also know M2C, which is the Mesoamerican, and other theories. And we recognize multiple working hypotheses. And the key point is that we favor openness. We, we like to have members of the church and other interested people, uh, as you mentioned, the never Mo's and so on, even former Mo's. We think that uh, everybody should have access to all the information. So we oppose any kind of censorship. We, we endorse uh, people making informed decisions. And that really defines who Heartlanders are. 
And as I mentioned earlier, we the one the only one thing we really have in common is we all think Gilcomore is in New York. <laughs> and it's beyond that, it's open season on whatever ideas you have, you know. But the key point I wanted to make is that we're all around the world. And I gave many examples of that during my talk. Then I, I put up this um, Dilbert cartoon because it kind of exemplifies some of these approaches. It's it, here, I'll just read it for your audio, audio uh, listeners. So Dilbert is talking to um, one of his coworkers and he says, yesterday someone disagreed with me and I changed his mind using data and reason. And the coworker says, that isn't possible. And Silbert says, I didn't think so either, but it happened. And then in the last panel, he says, the coworker says, it smells like a trap. And Dilbert says, I couldn't sleep all night. <laughs> and that's, that, that's so, such a fun way to point out how data and reason doesn't change people's minds, except in rare cases, mm -hmm. because we're all engaged in confirmation bias. Yeah. But that's what we love as, as Heartlanders. That's what we love about it because we like knowing what other people think. And we like comparing and considering different ideas and different uh, information and so on. And so, you know, it's really fun. But I'm, I'm going to just show quickly this article that was in the um, Tribune because the, the title was, Who are the Heartlanders and why do they insist the Book of Mormon took place in the U.S.? Can you see that okay or is it? Yep, loud and clear. Yep. And um, it, it was a, an amazing article for a lot of reasons, but the, the fun part for me was that the author of the article, the reporter, contacted a bunch of the Mesoamerican advocates to criticize the Heartlanders, which I thought was kind of funny. So I, I put these up on the screen for everybody in the audience to, to see and appreciate. Uh, one, of, one of them they quoted was Grant Gardner, and it says, a Book of Mormon scholar who has written numerous uh, books in defense of the Mesoamerican model. That's kind of an understatement. And he's one of the, the most prolific and adamant uh, Mesoamerican advocates. But he, he's speaking of the Heartlanders, he says, I see it frequently in words and talking to people. It's a lot more prominent than it was. Exactly how popular the Heartland model has become is hard to say. This is from the article. Uh, Wayne May pointed to the crowds he's able to draw where he gets four to 6,000 people attending his lectures over three days. And so, and that's, that's about right. That's about the numbers that we have. Um, it goes on to say, um, Wayne said, there's a lot of saints that are interested in paying close attention. And this is one of the fun ones. Gardner grudgingly <laughs> agreed with Wayne. And he said, we can't get that many people to any of our conferences, he said referring to his own community of supporters of the Mesoamerican model. It's a point of envy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for years, I went, used to go to the farms and fair Mormon conferences and they'd have two or 300 people and it was very sedate. They would have one session, no concurrent sessions, and typically no more than, you know, four or five. And they were all kind of boring talking about the same thing over and over again. Completely different dynamic at the Heartland conferences. The, the fair Mormon and farms people, there's no joy there. There's no enthusiasm. It's just kind of this really boring <laughs> re reiteration of the same thing they've been saying for years that fewer and fewer people believe, right? But the Heartland stuff has just enormous energy and, and largely attributable to Rod to begin with, because as you know, his personality, but it's also the content and the, the variety of people that come out. There's, there's new speakers every year and new approaches. So this article went on to say this, Christian nationalism, Hannah Syriac was one of the other people interviewed. You've had her on your show. Absolutely. Yep. And, and so she said, Christian nationalism, Syriac said, fuels their interpretation of everything, which is just such a, a preposterous statement. And she knows perfectly well that what fuels their interpretation of everything is the Hilcomore in New York, right? <laughs> That's why they're called Heartlanders. And so she's trying to frame this as a, uh, a bunch of crazies. She says here, they tend to be anti-vaxxers and to post about QAnon and are just prone to conspiratorial thinking. It, it's just such a laughable thing for her to say. She knows it's not true. I've talked to her, I've talked to her for hours. And she knows there's Heartlanders all around the world, non-Americans who couldn't care less about American politics. But 
and I'm going to get, get to why they're doing this in just a sec here, because it was interesting. So I was showing this to the, to the audience, these hundreds of people, showing them how these people are portraying them. And there were gasps, you know, and horror and shock. It's like, how could they say this about us? Because this is not us at all. You know? it, was, it was pretty funny. Hmm. They go along here and say, um, they say they tend to be anti-immigration. I mean, <laughs> it's just kind of funny. And they agreed that more than any other belief or concern, this appears to be the driving force behind the current surge in support of the theory. I mean, it, it's really preposterous. And so in the spirit of um, people making informed decisions, I like people to see what these LDS scholars are saying about their fellow Latter-day Saints. It's just an outright lie. And so you, I had to wonder with the audience why they're doing this. Why would they be saying this? Um, here again, Gardner says it's a very jingoistic, racist approach to the Book of Mormon. You know, so what I pointed out to the audience is that these two are members of the what I call the M2C Citation Cartel, right? They they both work at Fair Mormon, or, which is now Fair L, um, Fair Latter Day Saints or something. And so um, they've both been longtime contributors there. And of course, those of you who watch, those who watch your channel who aren't into the intricacies of internecine debates among Mormons <laughs> may not understand the significance of this. But it's, it's a big deal because this fair group purports to be the apologist for the church and has all the answers. And yet they they fight the Heartlanders, their fellow Latter-day Saints over these issues to the point we're going to the tribune and making these assertions. So I call it the M2C citation cartel. And, and one of the reasons is Brandt is not only at Fair Mormon, but he's also at the interpreter. He's their webmaster. He, he screens all their comments and stuff. And on top of that, he's a research assistant or associate and on the research and writing team for Book of Mormon Central. <laughs> so there's, you know, Book of Mormon Central raises millions of dollars every year to promote their Mesoamerican stuff. And as he said, they're envious of the Heartlanders because all the enthusiasm in the church about the Book of Mormon is with the Heartlanders, not with the Mesoamerican stuff. And more and more uh, Latter-day Saints are realizing the Mesoamerican stuff doesn't make any sense anyway. So you can see why he'd be out in the media trying to, you know, tell, tell the world that the Heartlanders are a bunch of racists and so on. So to me, it's kind of funny because how desperate they are. But, you know, it's sad to, to think that they've portrayed this in the media. And because of that, a lot of people believe it. So anyway, so I talked about that. And then I also talked, I'll stop the share there. I also talked about my upcoming book, um, called The Rational Restoration, which we'll talk about before it comes out. And it's, it'll be released on May 15th. And you'll be the first one that I do an interview with about it. Because I just love your channel. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so I talked about that too in a, in a separate session. Great. And then, like I say, there were talks about uh, Book Mormon geography and church history and uh, you know social issues and just all kinds of topics. Yeah. So Brandt. I've had Hannah Syriac on. Brent, open invitation. More than happy to come on. I'm talking to everybody. So good. You should have him on. I, by the way, I've talked with with Brent and with Hannah, and like you, I, I'm happy to talk to anybody. You know, I'll speak at any conference I'm invited to because I I like sharing ideas. I love people. I love getting to know what they think. And I've read Brent's books, and I think he's done a great job presenting his views. But I, I, my only criticism of him is how close-minded he is, mm. you know, and, and well, that and, you know, misleading the public about who the Heartlanders are. Sure, sure. Yeah, so. I think, I, uh, I think it, you know, everything is always going to be a mixed bag. You're going to have, see, I think yeah. that my thing, and I talked to Hannah about it when we talked about nationalism. Right. Yeah. And I said, you know, I can see how there would be nationalists, white nationalists in particular, who would glom onto the heartland because right. it would fit a narrative and they're using they might be using rod and wayne may um mm -hmm. i think it's important that they both be aware that they need to not get used, good point right yeah and absolutely. and and i think that i you know and i don't know if wayne is you know i think it's important that 
they need to make a real clear statement that they condemn white nationalism. Sure. You know, it's not part yeah. of your movement. Wayne did talk about it a little bit too. So. Oh, good. I'm glad. To just, just not as explicitly as I did. <laughs> okay, great. And uh, so, yeah, I just think that, you know, um, I don't like, see, this is the thing, folks. Our country is on fire. Nobody's talking to yeah. everybody. And when right. we are doing these kind of things where we're attacking each other, look, we, in my side, people, you know, we, we quibble over one little tiny doctrine and then we have a church split. Okay. Right. Um, right. This is endemic everywhere. And now our, our society is just is totally divided. And, you know, I think why in the world does it have to be this? Why can't we literally just be civil and just have adult conversations with each other? I mean, Rob Meldrum and John DeLynn sat in a room and take for hours and hours. Right. Why can't more of that kind of thing happen? And exactly. so, you know, and, and like I said, you know, Rob Meldrum might have me speak at a conference, an evangelical, right? Yeah. I think that's awesome. He said, Lynn Reidenauer has spoken at his conference. Yeah. He's a Baptist minister. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I, we've had we've had people who advocate the Mesoamerican theory speak at the Heartland Conference because exactly. we want people to understand one another. That's yeah. the whole point. Yeah. I yeah. think that, that um, I think it's interesting that there's a reason why the um, Rod's group is gaining steam. It's caught the notice of other people, including John DeLynn. The one thing I really like about what's happening is that, that for too long, there are these gatekeepers. Yeah. And they pretty much decided, no, you, you can come in. No, you, you stay out. And I don't like gatekeepers. Right. Same and here. part of this channel is trying to basically do an end run around the gatekeepers and mm -hmm. get another way for people to get a platform and have a conversation there. I told you early on, I said, you know, I saw what people were saying about you. And I'm like, I want people to, I want Jonathan right. Neville to tell his story and not have other people tell his story. Yeah, and so exactly. that's what this channel is about too, is about getting everybody out. Anyway, I'm, I'm digressing a little bit, but I just, I think it's important that, you know, what's going on is let's just be civil and kind to each other and just mm -hmm. have the opportunity just to have, rather than call names and do these stupid things that Dan Peterson's done in the past and silliness. Yeah, right. Yeah, totally. And, and again, we can't, we, we rehash it so often because it's so true. I mean, you're doing a, a great service for everybody, whether you're, you're demonstrating how we can disagree about different topics, but find commonality at the same time. Yep. And, and that's what I love about it. Yeah. Well, you know, dude, uh, this is so cool. I'm glad I have this relationship where I have this Rolodex where I can contact somebody at the last minute and say, hey, I just realized I have an open slot. Can you come on? And <laughs> yeah. I, I know it's snowing there, so you couldn't go to the golf courses this today. <laughs> right, exactly. So, <laughs> but um, I just want to thank you so much, Jonathan, for coming onto the program today. I know you're mm -hmm. a busy man. And mm -hmm. I just think it's very, I just want my audience to be able to hear all these different voices within the restoration. Jonathan, is there any Anything that you want to, uh, any, any parting, anything that we didn't cover that you may be uh, about? Well, I weekend? should mention, I guess I should mention that all of the proceedings from this conference will be available uh, through the Raj channel and some of them on YouTube as well. So if people want to see for themselves what went on, that's that, that will all be available. They're in the editing process right now, of course. Okay, that's great. That's great. Yeah, I remember okay. when I went, last fall, I went to the firm foundation. I was with Rick Bennett and I said, well, I, I don't know which one I said, I've almost seen almost all these presentations already on YouTube, you know, I'm familiar with a lot of, you know, the, yeah. these ideas yeah. anyhow. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's a great service that Rod's doing. And, uh, you know, I, I went and visited his home uh, uh -huh. that he's building, which is going to become a multimedia center as well. It's an yeah. impressive thing that he's building. Yeah. He's, he's got an 80 seat studio that he's building. And then he's also yeah. going to do an outdoor amplifier theater down the road. Yeah, Very cool stuff. that's right. Yeah, that's cool. Yep. So folks, I just want to remind you to uh, like and subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification button for when a new uh, a video comes out. Uh, also, our podcast is available on the major platforms such as Spotify, Apple, and Google. You can reach me at Gmail, I mean, uh, Mormon Book Reviews at gmail.com. I also want to remind you that if you want to financially support our channel, you can do that via Patreon, which I will provide a link in the description. Uh, everybody, uh, you poor, poor folks in Utah with all the snow, feel bad for you. Uh, <laughs> I'm here in sunny Florida. For sure. <laughs> but uh, you, you, summer's coming, don't worry. And uh, just remember, <laughs> wear a coat, and then the summer will be around right around the corner. So you all have yourself a wonderful. We, we might have to come to Florida, actually. But <laughs> come. 
please. Hey, Brent Ashworth is just just flew in this morning. I'm going to have lunch with him this week, so I'm very excited. Oh, about wonderful, that. cool. All right, All right. I'll, be, I'll be out All there right. in the fall. But anyway, we'll talk about that later. Great. All right. Awesome. See you later. All right, okay. folks. See you later. <laughs>